I think it's at that point where so many people think that I've abandoned this blade, that maybe I've forgotten it. And I think it's about time to talk about the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. Now, if you've spent any time around me personally, you'll know that this knife is far from forgotten. It's actually pretty high on the list of, of most used and most carried and most serviced uh, knives in my entire collection. Up there with the Legome, with the BRK Bushcrafter, and a few other very legendary knives for me. And that, ultimately, is where I would conclude this video if it wasn't for a look back. <coughs> now, like I said, it's been about two years. It'll be two years in July since I actually got this knife. And I think it's fitting that I talk about it and explain what I think of this knife long term and ultimately whether or not I still think that this knife is one of the best bushcraft survival combat utility knives out there. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So, no doubt there have been quite a few knives that have entered the channel since this knife. And there's been few knives that have left the channel since this knife. Uh, what do I think of this knife as a bushcrafting and survival knife? First, let's talk about bushcrafting. Now, it's true that I don't primary this knife as a bushcrafting knife any longer. And that's primarily due to my changing viewpoints and uses in bushcrafting. I since have moved over to using more of a traditional kit, uh, using, you know, an ax, a full-sized ax, a full-size saw, a hatchet, and conversely, a more smaller sized craft-oriented primary blade. Now that doesn't take away from the fact that this is still one hell of a blade, and whenever I look for a bushcrafting outing where I just want one camp knife, like I'm not trying to, you know, use a hatchet, an axe, you know, I just want one camp knife, one knife to do everything. Um, this is still the knife I turn to, undoubtedly, and I find that kind of weird and sometimes puzzling for my own self because in bushcrafting we talk about, you know, using multiple tools, many tools ultimately to achieve one job. And while certainly it is true if you use multiple tools such as a hatchet, an axe, and a knife, um, you may be able to accomplish that job with a little bit more ease or with a little bit better, um, you know, with a little less effort. And it may be, it may turn out a little bit cleaner. However, this knife still amazes me because of its versatility. It has a sheer ability to just do everything you need it to do, anything that you would call it to do. It's a great knife for smaller, more fine tasks. Obviously, you're not going to be whittling tiny things with this blade, but, you know, it can do a surprisingly good job on smaller uh, smaller projects, things such as netting needles. It can certainly craft out, and it can go right up to some of the larger crafts, doing things like batoning or even chopping, trailblazing, with relative and reasonable ease. And that is what continues to fascinate me about this knife. Uh, and one of the reasons that it will never really leave the collection is its bushcraft, and truly its bushcraft and survival prowess. It has a great ability to honestly work in situations where you may not expect it to. Now, in addition to this, the CPM S35 VN blade steel is still one of the best steels for bushcrafting and survival. I've talked about this before in a video I did earlier this year. I still think it's a great steel. I still think it's one of the best. Now, of course, you know, that's not saying that O1 or D2 or 1095 or 5160 are bad steels. It just means that this steel, I think, really excels in the woods. I think it's a great rust resistant steel. It's perfectly tough. You don't have to sharpen it a lot. And when you do have to sharpen it, it's not a nightmare like CPM 3V. So in addition to this, I have had to make some modifications. If you guys 
uh, are familiar with my review of this blade, you'll know that I, of course, took down this uh, upper guard. It was far more forward prominent and very hard for my thumb to overcome. So I did that. In addition to that, I also flattened the spine toward the back of the blade to give this knife the ability to strike ferro rods. And the last thing I did was I took the little glass breaker off the back because I honestly found myself stabbing myself with the glass breaker more than I was breaking glass with it. So I have made a few modifications to this blade to make it better over the years for my personal applications, and all of them have been good old Dremel jobs. There's been nothing too crazy with this blade, but ultimately, but ultimately, I was able to, with reasonable ease, do all three of these modifications and make this blade absolutely perfect for my multitask, multi-purpose camp blade applications. So that's this blade in a nutshell from a bushcrafting standpoint. I think this knife, if you're looking for a one tool option, something that is extraordinarily versatile, maybe pairing it with a much larger, like a full sized axe or full sized saw, or even if you're looking to pair it with something like a Baco Laplander, this blade does a fantastic job being paired with something like a smaller saw or a full sized axe. It complements those tools very well. If you're looking at doing bushcrafting uh, with a few tools set up, nothing too crazy and not a lot of tools, this is where this knife really excels. Now, from a survival standpoint, what do I think of this knife? Um, much of what I think of this knife from a bushcrafting standpoint carries directly over to a survival standpoint. This blade absolutely is keen. Would I say it's the best? Maybe not, but if it's not the best, it is not far from it. Um, blades like the SRK, or the Search and Rescue Knife from Cold Steel, are excellent. Blades such as the Garberg, the Mora Garberg, are also excellent, but this blade just has a level of multitasking and ability that goes above and beyond the tools formerly mentioned. Um, the one downside to that is that this blade is not cheap. Uh, it's near in the ballpark of $400, anywhere from $350 to $400, and like most of the blades I've been talking about here of late, that's a when and if you can get it. These knives are people who know or are in the know about these blades know what they're worth, and there's usually a pretty good back order on these blades. Last time I checked, I think it was nine months out. Uh, so if you order one today, you have to wait like nine months to get one. So these things are by no means easy to come by. But if you are ultimately willing to front those heavy costs, they this blade is just absolutely uh, stellar. I really cannot say enough good things about the CRK Pacific. And even though my tastes may evolve in bushcrafting and new knives come to the forefront, that's really so that I can stay on top of new technologies and continue to bring videos that are relevant to my viewers. Uh, if it was truly up to me and I wasn't running this YouTube channel to help my viewers, this would be pretty much, aside from the Legome and maybe the Battle Ore, basically one of the only knives that I have because it's really one of the only knives you need. And it really is just, like I said, downright, it's pretty darn perfect from the ergonomics to the blade shape to the steel choice, the handle, uh, the ergonomics are really great. In fact, I've never seen uh, on other knives a texturing quite like this done to micarta, and it is really great. I'm not quite sure how to explain it other than great because it, on the surface it looks really rough and it feels a little rough, but when you're actually holding it, it's n not producing hot spots, it's not giving you, you know, um, blisters it's traction that really locks your hand into the blade but without uh, hurting your hand per se then moving over to the sheath aside from adding a little leg strap like this so that you can secure it to your leg so it's a little less cumbersome this sheath has been absolutely perfect not only is it tough as hell 
but it's also very well made. And in addition to that, the blade even has a little bit of felt lining in here so that uh, your blade doesn't make as much banging or rattling uh, in the actual plastic insert. So overall, this blade is, I think, one of those that, while expensive, is nearly impossible to beat. You just can't get better than the CRK Pacific. If you're looking for an excellent combat fighting utility knife, survival knife, or even a do-all bushcrafting knife, the CRK Pacific may just be right up your alley. And that, guys, is overall two years of experience, two years of using this blade, two years of carrying it, and as this video has shown and demonstrated with, you know, batoning, feather sticking, fire starting, you know, with a little bit of modifications, this blade can just do anything you want it to, and actually rather effortlessly. So, anyways guys, that's all I have to say about the CRK Pacific. If you haven't checked one out, and you can afford it, I would highly encourage it.